Part of the trip in 2014 that we took to Japan with Andrew, his family, and my younger sister Lynn uh, begins really <laughs> in San Francisco. We are taking off to go to Nagoya. Now, I should say this is Nagoya via Tokyo, meaning we were going to go from SFO to Narita. Uh, airport and then from Narita to Tokyo and then from Tokyo we took a bullet train down to Nagoya. Uh, we landed at about 3 p.m. in Narita and because of that it meant that we didn't really get to the main part of Tokyo till about 5 30 ish and then we took a bullet train to Nagoya and arrived in Nagoya around 8 o'clock at night. Um, that being said, we didn't really get to do anything that night. I, I remember vividly going to an izakaya, which is kind of like a pub, and just getting some light meals, light snacks, and some drinks before going back to our hotel and calling it a night. Now, in the morning, we were able to uh, meet up with one of my friends that I made while I was living in Japan, which is kind of awesome. He's actually from San Jose, California. And we began at the Toyota Commemorative Museum in um, Nagoya. He met us there and we were able to kind of go around this museum and check out the history and what uh, they did in uh, Toyota from the beginning. They actually, a lot of people don't know this, but Toyota began as a clothing or cloth company. Uh, I don't really know how to call them. They created the cloth that you needed for manufacturing things, whether it be the, the coverings like sails on a sailboat or blankets or rugs for your room. They actually had all sorts of the machines and tools that kind of reminded me of like that they had this one crazy machine that reminded me of the industrial age in a, you know in America or in Europe where they had these crazy um, machines that would weave uh, the cloth together and that they would uh, make these gigantic blankets of, or sheets of cloth and uh, as you moved on in the museum, it actually got more and more high-tech. It's kind of interesting to know that Toyota is actually still doing this. Although we know Toyota as like a car manufacturer, they actually have other things that they make. Um, and one of them was this really crazy, like, super fancy, um, I, I want to call it a printer, but it made carpets and there was this like design that you could put into a computer and it would put the carpets together uh, using that design and you could actually see clearly the design that was being put into the computer being printed out on the carpet that they were making which was really really cool as you moved on into the uh, into the, the the factory or the museum rather you actually found out that, I, I mean, it makes sense really when you think about it. Toyota didn't really get into making anything move until the 1920s, and they actually started off with uh, motorbikes. They were trying to motorize a uh, bike. They had this actually really cool kind of uh, statue or, or figurines of people making this motorcycle and what it looked like. It's nothing like what we think of nowadays, but it was really neat and that's kind of where they started and as you moved further along in this museum they, they got deeper and deeper into how they they made uh, cars their their first cars were kind of a copy of uh, Ford's and they showed this wooden uh, sculpture I guess you could call it 
of a car and then they actually had people that would take uh, aluminum and hammer it out and make it into the shape of the car and they would use that wooden mold I guess is the better term for it as the, the, the gauge to know how much they, they need to bend the metal, what it should look like. It wasn't until much later that they actually started creating their own vehicles. Now, as like I said before, as you move down into the museum, you actually get to this place where they have all the motors that they ever made um, built and listed out on uh, this kind of display in the upstairs part of this museum and you could see all sorts of different uh, motors and how they worked or engines rather and how they worked um, they also showed how parts of the vehicle would work some really interesting things to, to have seen there were the like how a shift knob works a manual shift how, how you work that and it actually showed all the gears shifting and everything um, as well as a suspension, how suspension works on your car. And it was really cool to see like how these things worked without the car surrounding it. So it was out in the open. Um, it's, those were just two of the examples of things that were really neat that were in the area. And then uh, from there, they actually had um, kind of a dynamo setup for you to see and they had a car on top of the dynamo with all these pipes coming out of like the exhaust and a fan blowing into the intake and then all these little gauges that were measuring the environmental friendliness of the car what the horsepower and torque of the car were and it was it was really interesting to see now as you moved on it just got more and more futuristic um, for the vehicles that is, they actually had some electric cars there as well. But I would say that the museum overall is just an awesome place to go to. And um, at the kind of final part of the museum, they actually had how to make a car. They actually had part of a, a assembly line there and you're able to literally watch as they put the car together piece by piece. They had these machines that would like hammer out parts from sheet metal. They had all the tools that they used on display. It was uh, really, really cool. And it was uh, just an easy walk through a museum. Now to kind of, uh, pun intended, shift gears suddenly, we actually, right after going to this Toyota Museum, which I highly recommend going to and I would definitely go back uh, in the future if I'm in the Nagoya area. We went to Nagoya Castle, which is one of those items that you, uh, it is a must-see of Nagoya, I would say. And I should explain, the way we were getting around, we did have the, the Japan Rail Pass, which really helped us at the beginning getting from Tokyo to Nagoya at an easy no hassle type deal where you just flash this pass and you're allowed on to the bullet train or you're allowed on to local JR lines. But in Nagoya, they actually have this one day pass which is about uh, 500 yen and it is a pass for their bus lines. Now you could use it on all the buses, but it's meant to be used on this specific bus line that actually takes you to all the different uh, tourist attractions in Nagoya. The, the first that we went to was the Toyota Museum, as you just saw, and the second being the Nagoya Castle. Now, this Nagoya Castle uh, is different than almost all the other castles I went to. I felt it was much larger. Um, it's, it was definitely it felt larger than Osaka and I know it was larger than the Okayama castle that uh, was in the hometown that I used to live in when I was living in Japan. And so um, there was all sorts of different attractions inside the castle, meaning that you know that it was a museum as well as a structure. So the castle was awesome looking from the outside. But on the inside, they had all sorts of different uh, things that you could go have like a photo op at and 
Also they had all the different types of samurai armor, flags, and historical elements of Nagoya, which was really, really neat um, to, to be able to go see. On top of that, because we were there in the fall, Nagoya Castle is actually famous for hosting a chrysanthemum festival in the fall. And because we were there, uh, we were able to, to catch a glimpse of the, the tail end, I should say, of this festival. And it's pretty impressive what they could do with those flowers. They had all sorts of different arrangements out, and you can tell that there is actually uh, many, many different species of chrysanthemum that you could see. And it was uh, just another kind of added feather to that, that cap. And it really made going to Nagoya Castle really fun. Um, now, that's pretty much all we did for that night. I do remember getting uh, dinner with with my buddy Chris, and as well as, as my guys that were there with me. Uh, we went and had um, uh, miso tonkatsu, which is a dish that, that Nagoya is actually quite famous for. Uh, I highly recommend that. That was probably one of the better meals of the trip, I would say. Now jumping ahead to the, the, the next day, uh, I believe it's the, uh, the, the 15th, we are now going around the grounds of Atsuta Shrine and actually on the, the, the shrine grounds there was a, a little festival or, or matsuri, I don't really know what to call them in English, matsuri, I think it's roughly translated as festival. Um, and it was kind of a cool thing to be able to show my roommate and his family as well as my younger sister, uh, although she's already seen it once before, just what a Japanese festival is kind of like. It's, you know, these little stalls, there's all sorts of different things that you do and eat and try, and it was kind of a, a great cultural experience, I feel, for them. And it's one of those items where you know, you don't really plan that out, but if you keep your eyes open, you can kind of run into these types of things. And I, I feel that that was a really awesome little added thing to the trip, because I don't believe we ran into any other festivals after that, but we'll see in the future videos, I guess. Huh? <laughs> and following the, the shrine, we actually went to a place that I saw on Japanese TV quite a bit. Um, going over one of the great foods of Nagoya, which was this little mochi shop in, in Nagoya. And this mochi shop was way out of the way. It was like in the middle of nowhere. And so I would say that it was a, a really good trip. And I saw on various programs this um, mochi shop called Yamada Mochi Main Branch, I guess you could call it. Uh, I guess it's a, a chain now, but it's been there for ever since the late 20s or 30s. So it's been there forever. They're on their third generation of owner now, meaning they've passed it on within the family. And the mochi was delicious. And the grandmother that was there that I saw on TV, she was so lovely and, and grateful that a random tour guide, I guess you could call me, was willing to take his tour group to this little mochi shop. She ended up giving us a ton of free mochi. She just was so excited that these people from America were coming out to her little neck of the woods in Nagoya because it was just a really tiny little shop and it was it was a lot of fun. It was, it was great times and I really do feel that it, it helps bring the community together when when you're able to have little places like this and that's how they survive is through just the, the, the efforts of the community but then you get you know some total random strangers coming in and it, it brings a whole new atmosphere and level to their type of business and she was so grateful and she gave us enough free mochi for me to give my friends as a souvenir kind of from Nagoya when I went and visited them in our next spot, which will be Okayama. So yeah, this is really where our trip in Nagoya ends. It, it feels like a, a fast little video here, but like I said, there's not, there was not really a story taken. So this is kind of how I'm hoping 
will uh, work out. So I guess I'll see you in the next video or rather in Okayama. Ha <laughs>